Hi folks, Alex Klingelhaper here with Exential Wealth Advisors. It's 720 here in the middle part of the country on Friday. Happy Friday to you, June 30th, 2021. Here's your morning jog around the economic headlines of the world is here I'm back in the office this morning. Appreciate you guys taking the, the hotel video yesterday. Uh, Amazon uh, posts its third straight $100 billion quarter in a row, but really missed a lot of analyst expectations on the revenue side, uh, missed by about a billion and a half dollars, stock down about 4% here in the free market. Amazon, of course, still a fantastic business. I'm not sure if there's a strategy here that has big cap US companies in it at Exential that doesn't own Amazon. I guess there's a couple uh, that, that we don't own Amazon here at Exential. Grew uh, its headcount by like 27% uh, here uh, recently, 52% year over year. They're just hiring massive amounts of, of folks and really growing their e-commerce and also their Amazon Web Services uh, business continues to be really the, the pillar stock of the economy on a go forward uh, basis. Just a little bit of a hiccup here. I would expect those shares to recover. On a go forward basis, it's still really one of the best companies in the entire world. Another earnings story, we've got Procter & Gamble beating earnings expectation, but worrying about costs. They said they expected to see about $1.9 billion in go forward cost increases that could hurt profits down the road. Now we've talked a little bit about uh, input costs for producers, right? But Procter & Gamble also talking about our favorite thing to talk about, shipping, transportation costs, right? Procter & Gamble makes cream salves, they have owned Gillette, they own all of these you know, beauty and personal products <clears throat> that require lots of inputs from uh, places all around the world, dry bulk, etc. Bringing inputs together, manufacturing them, and then selling them to consumers. Well, guess what? That's pretty heavily reliant on getting large amounts of materials from different points in the world to, to the US and, and other parts of the world. Well, guess what? All of those big shipping costs, those container costs, those dry bulk rates that are astronomical right now are going right and hitting uh, Procter & Gamble's bottom line. Continues to be a bellwether stock in the economy. I would like to see how we fare over the next six weeks in terms of input costs. Uh, could be uh, some additional inflation coming uh, down the pike for uh, the next couple of months as we see that inflation not being as transitory, right? When the facts change, my opinions change. That's something that I'll always commit to you. Procter & Gamble, again, something to watch if they comment mid-quarter about more rising prices. Chevron and Exxon reported great earnings. Chevron now doing a buyback. Of course, energy has been in the doldrums really since uh, the, the energy price war of uh, 2020, right? Remember, uh, what was it, March or April of last year, uh, all of OPEC sort of uh, broke apart and you know, prices went negative for a bit. As energy is rallied, energy stocks really haven't. There's sort of a dislocation there. Chevron, seeing that as an opportunity, institutes a pretty major buyback. We've seen that uh, from Suncor did a fairly major buyback. I would expect to see some additional shareholder friendly activity in the energy space could be uh, some additional uh, really force towards that reflation trade, right? Those material stocks that are really the winners from that inflation trade, from that transportation and raw materials cost going up. Guess who wins? It's Exxon, it's Chevron, it's the major oil players, et cetera, the big mining players, right? Those are gonna be the beneficiaries of that sort of rotation in the economy, going back to the producers. If you want some additional information over the weekend, feel free to follow me. As always, it is OKC CFA CFP on Twitter. Until then, I do hope you have a wonderful weekend. I am out.